There are quite a lot of times in the Bible when Jesus meets whole groups of people and some of those encounters are really interesting but none more so than the moment he met the party that had been sent out to arrest him. So I'm going to read this account from John chapter 18. It says this in verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then Jesus answered them again, Who are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I've told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the same might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those whom you gave me, I've lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him, and they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Isn't it amazing that really what was meant to be a workmanlike exercise, a detachment of troops sent out with the high priest's servant and Judas in order to arrest Jesus, turns initially into a moment of worship. When Jesus says, I am he, they heard those words, I am, the very name of God. And, and they were struck at that moment and they thought, wow, on the ground. And so all of them there are on the ground in front of Jesus. They bowed down in worship. It was almost an involuntary act. As soon as Jesus spoke with that authority, I am he, in answer to the question, whom do you seek? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth, I am he. And they're down there on the ground. And you might think, well, that would be the end of the arrest. What an incredible story that would be. But obviously Jesus is being delivered up according to the determined will and counsel of God his Father. This is something that's been agreed in the Godhead from the foundation of the earth, that the Lamb of God would lay down his life for the sins of the world. So there was no way history was going to grind to a halt at this point. But isn't it amazing that those that were sent to arrest Jesus end up on the ground worshipping him? And it's Jesus who has to take the initiative. And he says, look, I am the one that you want. Now, let everyone else go, because he'd already prayed that none would be lost. So he wanted them, as it were, out of the way, that they weren't arrested too. And he goes like a lamb to the slaughter. And at this point, you can see, even despite all the turmoil of Peter with his sword, cutting off the ear of Malchus and Jesus having to heal him, and in all of that turmoil, you can still see Jesus He's not in the turmoil. He's, he's the prince of peace in this. He's the one who's bringing healing even when people are using swords. He's the one who's saying, put your sword away. This isn't the way to do it. And, and he's there as the prince of peace in the midst of this turmoil. And he's the one who brings these people in the arresting party back to focus so that they can do what they'd been told to do, which was to take him to Annas, the father of Caiaphas, who was the high priest. And so what looked as if it was going to turn into chaos because of the moment when they fell on the ground and worshipped and the swords came out and all of the trouble was there, Jesus somehow even takes control of his own arrest and the own, his, his arresting party and, and sees them leading him off, bound to the high priest, father-in-law of the high priest. So it's an amazing moment and, and it's an incredible encounter and, and it speaks to my heart of the, of the absolute peace that Jesus had come to in that garden 
when he'd prayed, not my will, but yours be done. He'd had the battle. He'd asked that the cup pass from him. But even then we're saying, not my will, but yours be done. And now in line with the Father's will, he goes to accept the consequences of the cross, making those people in the arresting party the workmanlike group, even though they'd also worshipped him. Thank you.